Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the things that you should do as a computer engineering student. So let's get started. So I already went through a video about this on what you should do as a computer engineering student. And if you want to see that video, uh, you can always click on the top right, or you can just continue watching this video. And I'm just going to give more examples and regrets that I've had as a computer engineering student. And I hope you guys take this information and learn from it and not do what I did or do what I didn't do, depending on the regret that I had. So I'm going to just get to it. The first regret I had was not getting an internship sooner. I didn't get an internship until my junior year of my undergrad graduate college degree and yes it was a good thing that I got an internship and I was uh, able to get exposed to that engineering field but it wasn't until later on when I was almost done with my degree one thing that I kind of regret is not getting that internship uh, as a freshman or a sophomore uh, when I was first starting out because having an internship really helps you see what all is involved with being an engineer whether it's computer mechanical electrical doesn't matter it really helps you see what is expected of you and what you should be doing as an actual engineer. You are able to see what they are doing and how they work and how they talk to each other, how they collaborate with each other. All of those little things that you are exposed to and that you see as an internship that you just don't think about, they really help you um, question whether or not you actually wanna do um, that particular engineering field. So for example, say you liked the idea of being a hardware engineer, then you go and intern as a freshman um, and you realize that you don't like doing hardware because you saw how the other engineers were doing it and it just wasn't something that interested you and you were actually more drawn to those who were on their computer programming, you know, whether it be Python, C++, whatever, you just found that more interesting. Well, then you can easily change your decision to software engineering as a freshman because you haven't taken any courses that require hardware engineering experience. Or, you know, if you don't like engineering at all and you don't like any part of it, like hardware or software, nothing, then you can always try to change your major uh, before sophomore year and change it to, I don't know, maybe business. Maybe you're more interested in that or um, math, maybe you want to be a math professor, then you can always do that and you won't fall as far behind because the further on you go, the more specific those courses are to the degree that you're getting. Um, so that's the first regret I have, just not getting an internship sooner because I probably would have been able to know that I wanted to go into software engineering and maybe even computer science. So I might have changed my decision from computer engineering to computer science, but you know, we'll never know. So at the end of the day, it's just something that I wish I would have done. My next regret is not reaching out to a TA or another student who had already taken the class that I'm about to take. Now, there are a lot of TAs who are there to make sure that you are learning the material and they are there to help you. But a lot of the times they're graduate students as well. So they have other projects to work on. So they really honestly don't have as much time as what you think to help you work through problems. And not only that, but uh, they're going to be helping other students in that same class or in multiple classes. Who knows how many other classes as their TAs of. So there are a lot of students that they have to monitor or to help and really they don't have that much time. So what they're going to do most of the time is just kind of help you at first but if you are really struggling and you are taking your time and you're showing that you're trying and you're putting in the effort but you just can't find the answer they will give you the answer that has happened to me many times uh, especially as a uh, junior and senior when the classes were getting way way more um, involved and specific and a lot harder because you couldn't just look it up on the internet the TAs were there to help me and they kind of just gave me the answers because they saw that I was trying I was reaching out to them I was reaching out to the professor asking questions but I couldn't quite get the answer so they ended up just giving it to me and they explained, you know, of course, why that answer was the way it was or why I had to program it that way. And I was able to understand what they were saying. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. But it just made it a lot easier because if I had not gone to them, then I wouldn't have been able to solve that problem or that homework assignment. And I would have failed that homework assignment and I would have gotten an F. Who knows what would have happened? The only problem is that I only went a couple of times for the homework assignments that I was really stuck on and I just wish I would have done it for just all of the homeworks or most of them. If you are ever stuck or you're ever just thinking, shoot, I don't have enough time to do this homework, 
go to the TA, they will help you. At the very least, they will help you and it'll be half the amount of time to do that homework than if you were to just do it by yourself. Um, just something that I wish I would have done um, a lot sooner and a lot more often. So the next regret I have, which is probably going to be a little bit of a shocker, is going to class. Um, <laughs> I know that it's, it's you wanna go to class and you wanna show up and, and show that you're there and that you're present and you know pay attention to the professor. Maybe you're someone who needs to go to class and have that structure, but for me personally, I didn't need that structure. I, in fact, I found going to class kind of a nuisance and that if I had the ability to take a online course over the in-class, then I would definitely do the online one. Um, now that may not work for some people, but if there is a decision between online or in-class, I would always choose the online. It just worked better for me. I was able to focus better in my room and um, I read through all the material that the professor provided. So it wasn't something that I fell behind on and I didn't need that structure of uh, being in a classroom and having the professor you know, talk to me and ask me questions and, and all of that. I didn't really need that and uh, nor did I want it. There were many times where I just thought to myself, wow, that was a waste of time, especially for the classes where the professors don't check your attendance. Now, if they do check your attendance, definitely go. So at the end of the day, personally for me, it ended up being an hour of time that I wasted when I could have just used that time to study more on a um, test or to complete some homework assignments. Uh, so it just, it really stressed me out more than anything else because I had to go from one class to another and I didn't really have any time to actually do any studying or homework. Um, so I had to do it later on in the day or on the weekends and it was just very stressful and I just feel like a lot of the times I didn't even need to go. I also felt like it was a waste of time because the professors most of the time would go over a set of slides for the day and I'm able to see all of the PowerPoint slides that they just went over. So all I have to do is just read through them and most of the time that was enough information for me to you know study and to do the homework assignments I just thought to myself since the tests aren't really based on what the professor says and more so on the information um, on the PowerPoint slides and the homework assignments then I don't really see the point in going that is one regret I have I think I've gone maybe about 80 or 90 percent of the time to all of my classes for all four years of my undergraduate degree and I just wish that I would have cut that down to maybe 50% of the time because I feel like I would have been just as fine and I would have had more time to either study, relax, or who knows, maybe even do better on some tests because I had more time to study. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. If you're someone like me who doesn't need that structure, doesn't need to go into class, then definitely do that. So the next thing that you should do and one thing that I regret is not getting as much scholarships as possible. Luckily my parents were there to help me pay for college, my undergraduate degree, so that was great. However, when I was a freshman or about to be a freshman in college, I decided to go to ASU. The main reason why I decided this was because, oh, I want to get out of this state and I want to go and see other people in a different environment and um, ASU I just really liked their campus and there was really no other reason other than that which was pretty bad on my part now that I think about it. It was a horrible decision and uh, it was just poor reasons as to why I wanted to go there. It was just because it had a nice campus which is it was ridiculous but you know that that's what it was and I was 18 then so of course you know 18 year olds I mean we we don't make the best decisions well unless if you are then good for you uh, I'm happy that you're doing that but uh, a lot of us don't really care about like the costs or the money if, if our parents are there to help us out so I decided to go to ASU which was a very poor decision and not only was it more expensive going to ASU which well $30,000 a year, um, then staying in state, which was about, I don't know, $10,000 a year. I also lost out on a four-year scholarship, and it's called the Lottery Scholarship, and this was a scholarship that uh, the state of New Mexico was offering students who just graduated from high school and going immediately into college. If you went straight from high school to uh, the college in, in state, then you would get this scholarship for four years, and this four-year scholarship would cover all of your college 
tuition for the next four years. So I missed out on a lot of money by making a stupid mistake and I ended up spending way more than what I should have. So if I would have just decided to stick to UNM, which at the end of the day, I ended up going back to UNM anyway, sophomore year. If I would have just stayed at UNM and gone there freshman year, sophomore, junior, senior, I would have gotten that scholarship. I would have only had to have paid for books or online tools. It's just one big regret that I have, knowing that it could have been free and I didn't even need to pay anything really. It, it just kills me. Um, it could have only been a couple thousand dollars in total for my undergraduate degree, uh, and it, uh, it wasn't. And if you are a undergraduate student, you just started or you just graduated from high school and there's a scholarship like that at your state or any other scholarship, uh, please apply to it as soon as you can and try to make sure you go to a college that's in-state because it's a lot less expensive and there's probably going to be a lot more scholarships available to you if you go immediately from high school to college at your in-state college. Or shoot, if you're going back to college, see if there's any scholarships available and apply to those um, because you don't know how many people don't apply and there are very specific scholarships for your ethnicity or your gender or what you're majoring in and whatever it may be, there's probably a scholarship out there for that. Just look and apply for any scholarships that you can and I'm sure you'll get something. So the last thing I think you should do and the one major thing that I regret is not looking for a job sooner. Um, I didn't start looking for a job until I think second semester junior year and yes, I still had about a year until I needed to actually you know, apply to these positions, but it still wasn't enough time because I didn't realize at the time that I had to get my master's degree, which I did not expect. I thought I only needed to get my bachelor's degree and then I could apply to some jobs. But for the job that I wanted specifically, it required a master's degree. Now, unfortunately, my university, they offer this uh, three plus one program where if you go and take uh, undergraduate courses for three years and then uh, graduate level courses for another two years, then you'll get your master's degree in five years instead of six years. So um, you save a year on that. But the problem is, is that this was only offered for first semester junior students. And when I figured out what I wanted to do and where I wanted to work um, and that I needed to get a master's, it was my second semester junior year. So I, I uh, was a little bit behind on that and I had to catch up on some courses and graduate in those five years that the uh, 3 plus 1 program offered. So it was just very, very stressful, very stressful uh, next two years as a senior and then um, my year as a, as a graduate student. It's just something that I wish I would have looked for sooner and actually figured out what I wanted to do. So if you are in that situation and you don't know what you want to get a job in, I'd suggest, you know, as soon as possible, just look, just look for jobs, you know, just see where you would want to work, um, what the requirements are. Uh, the minimum requirements to apply to that position um, and and go from there. So those are all the um, regrets that I had and I hope that you guys learn from this and you know you know, can take it or leave it but I hope you can um, not make the same mistakes I did and yeah so I hope you guys found this helpful and useful and if you did please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.